Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. If you are into real estate photography, listen up. I'm going to share with you some of my special tricks that I've learned over the last 15 years I've been doing interior design photography. I have shot over 200 properties, including the Hotel Collectionneur in Paris with a presidential suite where Barack Obama stayed, or uh, a chalet that you can rent for $50,000 a week, or just simple boutiques hotels in Paris, or great interiors, $12 million houses in Los Angeles. And while doing that, I've learned a few tricks that really got my photography to the next level where I was able to charge more money, where I was able to get more clients and a better word of mouth. So let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna go from the least important to the most important. Number five, use existing elements to correct the white balance. This one is very simple, but you see this photo here, it has a little color cast. And sometimes when you have white or neutral gray elements, it's kind of cool to just go into the white balance here and use the white balance speaker to just make sure, you know, that it's really white and you don't have any color cast because it's so easy to get colors cast. All right, the next one is really important. Trick number four, wait for the outside to be at blue hour if you want to show the inside and the outside of a beautiful place. For example, you can see this is a $12 million house and that's how it looked in the mid afternoon. You know, and I just didn't like the look that it had. And I don't care how many flash you put out there. Uh, it's going to look not so good during day. So what I did is I just waited for the blue hour. The blue hour is when the sun is behind the horizon. You don't get the harsh light anymore and you get something much nicer. For example, this is a chalet that I shot. I wish I had the before photo, but it was amazingly different. You can see here, we, we can see the blue hour that's outside. Everything, all the colors really come out in a chalet and they love the photo. Same thing with this restaurant. I waited for the light to be just lower so that all the practical light of the restaurant could show. And that's the other trick is you got to turn on all the practical light. You see, I added candles everywhere. It just looks so boring. But now waiting for the blue hour and having all the lights light up, it looked really interesting. This is another close up. Now this one, I wish I could shoot the before photo, but same thing, I waited for the night to start coming in. Now don't wait too late because then it gets really contrasty. But this reception looked completely different with having the blue hour on. Now this one is very similar, but super important, which is close the curtain if you've got interesting lights. This is the Hotel 7 in Paris, and they hired a really amazing designer who did amazing light work in the room. And you can see here, there is lights there, lights there. So I closed the curtain. Uh, I even added these two candles so you could see, so you would have a sort of a natural dodge and burn. I wish also I had the photo with the curtains open, but it was ugly. And this shot got, brought me at least 20 customers because people had never seen this room this way. And all it took was turning the lights on, every practical light, every candle you can get your hands on and taking the curtains down. Of course, you've got to work on a tripod. In fact, I'm going to give you a playlist at the end of the video with some of my best interior design tutorials that you can watch. Also, take a second to like this video. If you do, it helps the YouTube algorithms to have other people be able to see it. Also, leave me a comment and tell me what you think. I read every single comment and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. All right, tip number two, police border your photo. What that means is you wanna go around your photo and make sure you don't have something like this would be you know, half in or half out. Uh, this is kind of okay because it's kind of like the same texture than this. So on this photo, for example, I on purpose left this kind of half in half out. So it's not an absolute rule, but I wanted to tell a strong story. And if I was too wide, I was not really on that bed, which I really like how white it was. So basically police border, I mean, just look around your border and police it. Make sure there's not something weird that's like a half in or half out. That is really important. All right. Special trick number one and the most important of all, probably the one that brought me the most money is dodge and burn your photography. So this is a good example. This is a photo of the Hotel Abbey in Paris, a beautiful four star hotel. And they have this, you know, very small boutique hotel. Uh, every painting you see there is probably worth like $10,000. It's crazy. I mean, the, uh, the quality of the furniture in that hotel is unbelievable. If you want to have a great stay in Paris, check out the Hotel Abbey. They're not paying me for thing this. It's really where I would want to stay and do like a, a special new honeymoon with my wife, for example. It's just unbelievable. Anyway, so on this one, I'm just going to do a quick, you know, open the shadows, bring down the highlights, do the blacks, do the white. And uh, I'm going to use this trick of uh, maybe this is supposed to be kind of grayish. 
Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't work. So sometimes you have to like, basically um, there's too much green. So I'm going to add a little bit of magenta and maybe just a little bit more. I mean, white balance is an artistic decision, but using the picker is a good starting point. I think I want to make it warmer, to be honest, on this one. Yeah, tidy warm. Now, this trick that I've shown many times, and in case you've not watched one of my previous interior design video, is the trick that got me the most business. When I started doing this, I started getting a word of mouth more than anything I've ever done in interior design photography. And that is so simple, it's crazy. You take a little brush, okay, you make sure you click on double effects to make sure everything is on to zero. And then very important, that brush, you make sure that flow and density is below 80. I would say around 70 is even better for this trick. And this is something that I learned from Joe McNally. I remember very early on, about eight years ago or nine years ago, I attended a lecture from Joe and he said, an object which is partially laid is more interesting than an object which is fully laid. And that was a life changing quote for me. Because let me show you, you see how that door here is kind of evenly laid. I mean, we have a little bit of light here. Now let's pretend that there was another light bulb coming from the side here. Oh, actually, let me just put on some value here, like one. And now you get a little beam of light. Now don't overdo it. I don't know if you saw last week's video where I talk about the five biggest mistake in Lightroom, but when it comes to interior design and when you have the curtain which are closed, the light beams are very visible. So this is the only case where you can kind of push up the dodge and burn a little more than you would do, for example, on a portrait or on a landscape. Basically, this light is casting, you know, light. I'm just exaggerating. I'm doing this, this, I'm doing this, this, and uh, taking this light, going this way, taking this light, going this way, and pretending it goes here. You see this door is completely even led. So I'm gonna pretend there was some kind of light behind this and just add some light here. And let me show you the before and after. Before, after. For me, it completely changed the photo. So if you think it's too strong, you can lower it. I'm 0.96. Try to not go over one. But usually for landscape, I go to 0.5. And for interior design, I go almost at one. This could really happen if there was 3D light there. But here is a story. When I started doing this, people said, there's something very emotional about your photo. I can't really tell what it is. And then I started getting phone calls and word of mouth just exploded. So that's why it's tip number one. All right, guys, I just came up with a new course called the Fine Art Masterclass course, which covers some of the best retouching of my last six coffee table books, but also includes a masterclass on how to get published, how to get a deal with a publisher, and how to get a deal with a gallery. Here is a full presentation in case you've not seen it. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm really happy to announce you that I have a new course coming here called the Fine Art Masterclass course. This is seven years in the making, actually even more if you take into account when I shot the photos. But basically the idea of this course is I'm gonna show you all the best photos of the six coffee table books that I've published over the last seven years. We are gonna start with the Paris book, black and white. I'm gonna show you some of my best shots, like this Arc de Triomphe photo that I retouched with Aurora HDR and Lightroom. This crazy panorama of the Eiffel Tower that is my most sold panorama of the Eiffel Tower in galleries. Then we're gonna do the New York book. On the New York book, I'm gonna show you so many projects. This beautiful black and white of Brooklyn, a metro station in black and white. I'm gonna show you the back cover of the book with this photo of Brooklyn. And I'm gonna show you sky replacement with black and white of this foggy photo of the Manhattan Bridge. Then we're gonna to go to the Venice book. And on the Venice book, I'm gonna show you so many projects from carnival shots to extreme loan exposures to some of my most iconic photos of Venice before and afters, including Verteramas, including loan exposure with filters, everything, so many projects in Venice. Then we're gonna to go to the Los Angeles color book where I'm gonna show you lots of projects, Beverly Hills, colorful. I'm gonna show you how I did the cover of my book, which is not only the cover of my book, but it's also the cover of the state of California magazine. I'm gonna show you some projects from Venice Beach, some panoramas in downtown, some photos for the Malibu State Park. In all, you've got over 25 different projects. Then we're gonna to go to New York, and I'm gonna show you how I made the cover of my new New York book. Many projects, Central Park at fall, uh, I'm gonna show you this amazing photo of Central Park, how to shoot at night, how to create really interesting vertoramas in the city. Last but not least, we're gonna do my Paris book where I'm gonna show you some crazy projects, including the cover, which was a very hard project, including my most famous HDR photo of the Eiffel Tower, including crazy 
HDR panoramas with different kind of colors and last but not least day to night kind of photography. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in this course including a business class on how to get a better exposure in the media, how to get published in magazines, how to get book deals and how to get into galleries. So if you want to take your photography to the next level, if there's only one course you want to buy from me, that is a Fine Art Masterclass course. Not knowing how to shoot and knowing Lightroom and Photoshop can really make or break your career. I really want to help you to get to the next level. This is a perfect course for you. I'm sure you're going to love it. It's going to take your photography to the next level.